So let's see what is struct in Golang. So struct is a collection of different types of data types. So earlier we saw that array, right? So in that array, we were only able to store similar type of data type. So if you're creating only integer array, you can only store integers. If you're creating string array, you are only storing strings over there. But in struct over here, we can create a structure of a different types of data types available and we can create a use of it. So let's go ahead and create a structure over here. So here what I'll do is I'll create a structure. To define a structure, we have to define a type for it. So we will start with a type and then we have to define what type it is. So I'm taking the example of a student and then we have to define that is a struct. And then with the curly braces, we have to define the different data types available. So here I am creating the different data types. So I'm creating a name that is of string. So student will have a name. It will have roll number. Okay, which is of type integer and it will also have the list of subjects available. Okay, so I'll just do subjects available and that is of type string. So this is the structure that we have created. Let me add the comments over here. Student struct. Now let's see how to create the object of it. Okay, how to refer to that particular struct. So what we can do over here is we can define the variable. I'll say student one equals to student and in the curly braces we have to define the variables that we have created we have to define the properties okay so here i can say that name property name should be shabir roll number is five and we have the list of subjects available okay so subjects equals to slice of strings right and here we will define the subjects available so suppose maths physics, chemistry. So this is the struct that we have created. So the structure have name, roll number and list of subjects available and we have defined all those values over here. Let's go ahead and print this. We'll use fmt.println and we'll use student1 to print this, okay? So let's run this application. And you can see that we are getting the data, right? Shabir, roll number five and math, physics and chemistry. This is the slice of subjects available and we have defined over here. Now from this particular struct over here, if you want to traverse through any of the properties or if you want to fetch any of the properties, then we can get the values using the dot operator. So if you want to just get the name of it, name of the student, then with the student one variable, you can get the name of it, student one dot name. Then if you run this, you will get the name of the student. If you want to get the subjects available and if you do the subjects over here, you can get the subjects also if you run this. Okay. If you want any particular subject also, then with these square brackets, you can get the subject also particular subject. Okay. So you can see that you are getting the maths over here. Similarly, if you want to change any information, right? So student one dot, if I do roll number equals to six. So that means within this student one, I have changed the roll number. So let's print this again. And you can see that, let me remove the subject also. And let's run it again. You can see that I'm getting the roll number, which is updated over here. So you can fetch the values and you can update the values accordingly in the struct. Now, Go compiler is smart enough to understand what all the properties that you have defined and according to the values that you assign over here, it will understand that what are the values that you are assigning. So if I remove this implementation over here, if I remove this subject information, if I remove this roll number and if I remove this name, okay, then with this implementation also, Golang will understand that these are the information that is passed accordingly, name, roll number and subjects. Let me remove this and let's print this. Okay, you can see that we are getting the data over here. Okay, now though you are able to implement this way, I suggest you to not use this way because what will happen is if there is any change in your structure, right? In your struct, suppose you added any variable over here, right? Suppose let me cre just create another slice over here of type string. Once I do this, what will happen is if I run this again, you can see that you are getting too few values in the student literal. That means that it is only able to match this name with this Shabir roll number is five and this particular slice to this particular slice, which is why created newly, but there is no data for this particular subject. So what we have to do is we have to create or we have to record our refactor our code to handle this particular thing. Okay. If you are not providing particular names to overcome that we should always specify the variable names. Okay. So if we give over here 
नेम रोल नंबर एंड सब्जेक्ट्स सो इफ यू हैव गिवन दिस वे देन इट विल नॉट कंप्लेन अबाउट दी फ्यू लिटल्स दैट इट वॉज कंप्लेनिंग अर्लियर बिकॉज इट इज डायरेक्टली मैपिंग द वैल्यूज इट इज डायरेक्टली मैपिंग नेम टू दिस नॉन नेम प्रॉपर्टी रोल नंबर विद द रोल नंबर प्रॉपर्टी एंड सब्जेक्ट्स विद द सब्जेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी एंड इफ यू चूज इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू एड एनी ऑफ द डेटा फॉर दिस ए दैन इट इज फाइन बिकॉज यू आर नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यू कैन प्रोवाइड बट इट वॉन्ट कंप्लेन यू so if you run this again you will be able to successfully run this so i always suggest you to give the implementation this way give the name of the variables itself and assign those values to it when you are working with the structs now the naming convention of the structs is also similar to what we saw earlier for variables for constants and all other things right whenever you are doing the camel case notation it will be only available within the package and if you are doing the pascal notation it will be available throughout the application it will be available also in the other packages if you are going with this particular implementation then the other packages when you are using the student struct in the other packages they will be able to identify okay there is a student struct available but you won't be able to access this particular internal fields into that particular packages so you have to make this also upper case you have to make this also pascal case then only you will be able to use all this information in your other packages so this way if you do it will be available in the other packages also now you can create the suppose i'm creating the student 2 okay and i am assigning that student 1 let me print the student 2 also over here and let me print this you can see that we are getting the correct information now suppose if i am changing the value of student 2 student 2 dot name equals to kutub okay and if i run it again you can see that it is not changing for the student 1 it is changing for student 2 only so, so structs are value type it will only pass the information of the values okay it won't pass the pointer location itself if you want to pass the pointer location you can pass with the pointers okay this way you can pass the pointer location also and if you run it again you can see that it will be changed to both the places so this way you can go around for working and copying the data from one struct to another struct and you can also pass the pointer location of the structs so go language supports composition relationship in structs so it doesn't have a inheritance relationship so that means it will not follow you or it will not give you is a relationship it will give you has a relationship using composition so that's called embedding in golang Let's see with the example what we mean by that. So let's create a couple of structs. So we'll take an example of a computer where we'll be having a processor, memory, hard drive, and everything, and we'll be creating a struct for those things. So let's create a struct for processor. This is a processor struct, and this will have the properties such as processor name, which is of type string. and it will have cores available right and which will be of type integer and this will have other information also but let's only give this two information to make it simple let's create another struct this is of type memory we will give the comments over here let's give memory capacity we'll give in integer okay we will give the values in gb over here okay and we will give memory type and this will be of type string here we will define the type of a memory like ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 so the memories and all those type of memories we will define over here we can create different more structs as well but let's keep it simple let's just create only processor memory and we will create a computer struct so we will create computer struct and let's comment this as a computer struct now this computer struct will have processor and memory so this will have processor this will have memory and this will also have price for it okay so i'll just give price as integer so what i created over here is a embedded relationship okay embedding in structs so this is a composition relationship where you can see that we are defining a has a relationship that means computer has a processor computer has a memory so it's a composition relationship it's not a inheritance so if it would be inheritance it would be considered as a is a relationship just to take an example dog is a animal so if we have two structs animal struct and a dog struct so we can inherit it right dog is a animal so that's an inheritance relationship this is a composition relationship where we are defining has a relationship 
Now let's see how to assign all those values over here. So let's just create the object of it. Okay. Of the computer. We'll create the computer and we'll create this way. Okay. So, so here you can see that we have declared the computer. Now, if you want to set the values of everything, what we can do is we can define this way computer dot price equals to 50,000. Now computer dot you can see that if you do over here dot operator then you can see that whatever variables are available inside memory struct and processor struct we can directly access it we don't have to go through like processor dot cores or processor dot processor name okay we can directly assign those values because go language will know that you are trying to access those information only okay so suppose i'm directly giving processor name over here i'll give intel i5 okay i'll give computer dot cores equals to six computer dot memory capacity equals to 8 gb computer dot memory type equals to ddr4 and let's print this okay with the fmt package fmt dot println will print the computer let's run this application now and you can see that we are getting the computer struct. All the information are assigned accordingly. Intel i5 and the cores of the processor, those are inside this particular inner struct. Okay. And the memory is inside this particular struct. And this is the entire computer struct available. So, this is one way that you can define the struct information. The other way is directly at the initialization time. So, if you do this way also, like computer 1 equals to computer, and here if you define this way, then you have to internally define the memory and processor. So we will define this way processor colon and processor. And inside this, we have to define the processor name that is Intel i7 cores 8. And then we have to define memory. Here we'll define the memory capacity. Memory capacity is 16 GB and memory type we will define as ddr4 and after this we can define the price suppose 70000 okay so this way also you can initialize your struct this is the embedded struct let me give the comma over here okay let's print this information this is a computer one right so let's run this again and you can see that we are getting the information over here. So this way you can initialize this way also with this syntax and you can initialize with this syntax also. And if you want any values over here, suppose if you want computer dot processor name, okay, you can directly get the processor name and you can print it out. Okay, you can see that you don't have to go through computer dot processor dot processor name. Okay, you can directly get those values as well. If you want, you can take the processor also. So whatever is available inside that processor, Okay, all the variables, you will be able to get those variables. You can see that. So this way you can do embedding in structs. <laughs>